continuing with the Mass Mora series, we've got this awesome elf named Azure. As you can see, I've added some base colors to it already. So now we're just going to get into the style of how we can do really dark colors and make it still stand out well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a really nice shiny wash. So we're trying to make it look like old hammered metal, very dark in color and palette. We're going to be mixing in some blues and some blacks and grays across the blades, all the metal works. He's got leg armor, waist armor, and the swords themselves. Now we're going to come in with that blue wash that I was talking about. We're really just trying to color the surfaces, so it's just pushing those shadow values even further. And here we go, so it's all nice and darkened up. Now we need to get the rest of the armor together before we start messing with the tones of the metal. We want to have a nice almost black appearance for all the stuff, so I'm going to be using a lot of blues and grays and purples. You can see there's a few little different pieces throughout the armor. You'll see I'm working on some leather here. I wanted to mix it up. I didn't want to just make it one solid color. We've got white that will accent along with his hair, brown as a nice leather breakup, and then the dark black blue. Now we're adding in a little bit of highlight to the blue. Now we're going in with another metallic color on the metals and I'm just hitting the edges. It's playing around with the texture. I come back to the sword several times throughout this. I wanted it to look like a moon metal or something like that, like space metals, because I wanted to have a kind of a magical vibe. Now I'm working on the face. We're trying to get that nice pale purplish tone, We're trying to match the concept art in the piece in the back. So we're just slowly working our way around, very light glazes applying just a little bit of different colors of purple and light tones of blue. You can see that pale gray blue right there that I'll keep mixing in to that light violet and keep some nice shading in where his hair is blocked enough since he's kind of looking down. Each time I'm just hitting a smaller and smaller section. Doing the same thing with everything else around the piece. Every single time, just a little bit of a brighter color, a little bit of a brighter tone, and just highlighting a smaller and smaller section. Now we're going to be messing with the golds. So he's got gold handles, uh, guards, and pommels. So I like to use this orange to yellow mix, and then I will go over with a coat of gold metallic. It makes it pop a little bit more when you actually kind of build in the background.
Now I'm exploring with the hair, trying to get the right volumes and tones. This again, messing with white is always a really big challenge. And where he's got big volumes because the entire top of him is just his hair. And as I go through, I'm noticing spots that are a little too dark that I want to try and call out, like the inside of the cape since the cape curls up. I want to try and add some highlights there just to bring a little bit more character and life. So I'm turning the lights on and off to look at how it's going to look in the ambient temperature of the room. And as you can see, his hair just kind of blows out his face. It's the lightest thing on him, and so you're not seeing his face anymore. It's, it feels a little too blue instead of that pale blue violet that I wanted. So I'm just going back with another color and trying to paint over it once again. Now, never be afraid to just throw some more paint on and give it a shot. So now I'm keeping more desaturated tones for this to try and pale him out and get that right color tone that I'm really aiming for to match with the concept art. And each time, just a little bit of a smaller area, focusing on the side of his face that's blocked by far less hair. I'm trying to get this line of light that's coming down. And he also has red pupils, so I'm going in and trying to apply it. This was really tough because the one eye is blocked off by the side of his hair. So I tried to explore it and I realized at the angle where this is going to be sitting at the table, why am I bothering with that one eye? All I need to do is get the exposed eye really covered and looking proper. Coming back again, as I was talking about with adding a little bit of variation to the textures, this is popping the seams around the gloves to give a little bit more substance. I want this to, the hair and the cape to kind of pop and you can see it's very wavy. So I'm trying to do a little bit of like a wet blending kind of style you'll see in a little bit here. I'll just start throwing on colors and I'm just seeing what sticks. Now I'm hitting just highlights along the cape using just really wet, very glazy thin coats and just, I'll start blending it in. So here I'm building a couple of different colors on my palette. This way I can quickly jump back and forth between lighter and darker colors and start blending the wet paint together on the cape. So I'm just blending in between some low and high values. I'm trying to get the waviness of the cloak to stand out. But the cloak is a very big flat surface. There's not a lot of small waves in it, as you can see. I'll keep filling in smaller and smaller bits as, as I go. Now what I'm doing is I'm coming in and I'm just adding some more highlights to the face. As I've been working around the body, I'm starting to realize where my eye is being pulled. So now I'm trying to, again, just push where I want the eyes to be. And I really want it to lead to his face. I'm working a lot on 
his forehead, his nose, the ridge of his nose, his chin, his cheeks. He's starting to look pretty good in the face now. I'm getting kind of happy in the direction it's heading. But the swords, they're just not where I want them to be. So I've painted over them a couple of times. Now I'm just laying out the, the sharp edges of the blade for now. And then I'm just gonna come in and kind of dirty it up and pock it up. I'm using a couple of different metallics, watering them down and dotting them in. Cause again, I want it to look like hammered space metal. They're not earthly looking metal blades. coming in with some darker and lighter colors. Some of them blended with metallics, others not. Uh, this is just a thin down black and I'm just lightly coming in and touching in spots where as the metallics dried and gathered together, I started noticing areas where they pooled away and started leaving little pock marks. So I'm exaggerating those by adding a little bit of dark in there and then coming back with another higher metallic and hitting them with light on the bottoms of them to represent that they've got divots and, and hammer marks in them. That is the final piece. It came together pretty good. I learned a lot in this piece, explored a good bit, and I'm looking forward to working on painting some more. See you next time.